In this video, it's multiple imputations all the way. Multiple imputations are an excellent way of dealing with missing data. But how do they work and why do they work? Let's take a step back to understand why we might have a problem with missing data in the first place. In the social sciences, we often work with samples and we want those samples to be representative so that we can say something about the population. If we have missing data, our sample can be biased. Let's take a very small data set so that we can understand this risk of bias. Here we have a bunch of people, an attitude, imagine what you want for the example, age, a test score and income. If you want to describe the population, we actually draw inferences from the sample. That's basic quantitative analysis. So we have an average income of 2083 or an average age of 23.3. We can also run a regression model to predict attitudes. What happens if there are missing values? Our analysis will use the values that are available. We can still calculate the average income using the values we have, but our estimates may be biased. To illustrate this, recall that with complete information we got a mean income of 2083. In this example, with missing values, we get a mean income of 1000. In this case, we can see that this is biased. But the problem is that in reality, outside this constructed example, we only have the data with missing values, so we don't know if and how much bias we have. If you're running a regression model, missing values can mean that the sample is different depending on the model we're running. It's different people who are in the model. For example, if you're predicting attitudes with a test score, we're looking at a different set of people than if we're predicting attitudes with income. That's problematic. We can also see how we're losing information. If we completely ignore people because we don't have their answer for one of the variables, we also lose everything we know about them on the other variables, like ignore their age. This is the standard way that statistical packages deal with missing data. Now, if you're thinking this is crazy, the default approach isn't necessarily bad. If the missing values are missing at random, it's as if we had a slightly smaller sample of the population, but it's still representative. The challenge is that we don't know why values are missing. We can make assumptions, we might have ideas that some types of people are less likely to report their income when asked, like the very rich and the very poor, but we don't really know. There are some common but inadequate solutions for dealing with missing data. Some replace missing values with mean. This gives us a complete data set, but we introduce two problems. First, we assume that the mean of the smallest sample, the sample with missing values, is unbiased. That's a very strong assumption. Second, we reduce the variance of the data. This means that the results of many statistical tests look more certain than they really are. So we might draw the wrong conclusions. Similar problems occur when regression model is used to predict what values we would have observed, the uncertainty in the data is underestimated. Sometimes researchers create a separate category for missing data. The problem with this is that we assume that all missing values are missing for the same reason. This is usually a very heroic assumption in the social sciences. A person who can't remember their income, a person who doesn't want to admit their low income to an interviewer, and a missing income because the interviewer didn't catch the number, that doesn't sound like the same thing to me. There is a better way though. Multiple imputations. The basic intuition isn't too complicated. We use a regression model with the other variables in the dataset to predict possible values where there's a missing one. Because the aim here is to predict, we don't worry about multicollinearity. However, there's a neat second step, the multiple part in multiple imputations. Instead of taking the prediction directly, we sample from the distribution around the predicted value. Typically, this is a normal distribution defined by the predicted value and the uncertainty around the prediction, like the confidence interval. Sampling from the distribution means that we pick values at random, but the probability is related to the height of the curve. We're most likely to pick a value close to the prediction. If we do this a couple of times, we capture this distribution, that is, we capture the prediction and the uncertainty. Each time we draw, we make a copy of the dataset. So each of these datasets has complete data, 
but each dataset is slightly different because of the sampling from the distribution. We can then run our analysis on each of the datasets, such as running a regression model on each of them. Finally, we combine these different results. Of course, the machine will do this for us to ensure that the results are accurate. Once we have combined everything, we have complete data plus the uncertainty that comes from not really having data for all cases.